dear students today i'll discuss about the applied anatomy of midbrain before discuss this applied anatomy first of all you should know what is the blood supply of midbrain midbrain is supplied by posterior cerebral artery branches and superior cerebellar artery branches which are further branches of basilar artery okay so if the occlusion of any one of artery occur it will lead to the sign and symptoms affecting that part so if these vascular supply hamper it will lead to some syndrome two syndromes are concerned with the midbrain applied anatomy most important one is the weber's syndrome weber syndrome is produced by a occlusion of the basilar region of cerebral peduncle this is the cerebral peduncle as you know consist of tegmentum substantia nigra and crust cerebra this complete is cerebral peduncle okay so weber syndrome occur when there is a vascular lesion of the basal region of cerebral peduncle due to the occlusion of a branch of posterior cerebral artery okay so if this area is affected as you see here this complete area will get affected in this syndrome okay so it will lead to the sign and symptoms related to the structures present in this region as you see here there is a presence of third nerve this is a third nerve and this is the crust cerebri having the cortico spinal and cortico nuclear fibers they are the descending tracts so they will affect it so this will lead to the some important signs and symptoms due to the involvement of this third nerve it will lead to it will lead to due to this third nerve involvement it will lead to the same site third nerve paralysis lead to drooping of upper eyelid it occur because third nerve supply one muscle levator palpebri superioris this muscle will elevate levator means elevate palpebral means up Uh, palpable fissure superior means upper eyelid if this muscle will elevate upper our upper eyelid and this muscle is supplied by the third nerve if third nerve paralysis occur it will lead to the same side drooping of upper eyelid number one feature number two feature it will be affected because of this third nerve paralysis it will also lead to the lateral squint because of un sorry un opposed action of lateral rectus muscle actually all the muscles of eyeball known as extraocular muscle supplied by third cranial nerve except lateral rectus okay this is supplied by sixth cranial nerve and superior oblique 
which is supplied by the fourth cranial nerve. These lateral rectus will pull our eyeball. This is the medial side, this is the lateral side, this is the superior side, this is the inferior side. This lateral muscle will pull the eyeball towards lateral side. Okay. And it is supplied by six nerve. So this muscle works over the other muscles which are paralyzed due to the supplying supplied by the third nerve. So eyeball move towards the lateral side and this type of the condition is known as lateral squint. So we will see the lateral squint. Now second thing what happened due to the paralysis of due to the destruction of the cortico spinal track it will lead to the contralateral hemiplegia this will lead to contralateral hemiplegia okay so and one more thing also occur due to the third nerve paralysis third nerve paralysis is the pupil becomes fixed and dilated. This occur due to the involvement of Edinger Westphal nucleus which is a third nerve component because this Edinger Westphal nucleus will constrict the pupil by supplying the muscles ciliaris and the sphincter pupilli and these muscles will get affected this will lead to the pupil becomes dilated and fixed. So this will occur in case of the Weber syndrome. Weber syndrome is due to the reason of the basal reason of the cerebral peduncle due to the vascular reason, vascular occlusion of a branch of posterior cerebral artery. This will involve the third nerve and the corticospinal tract present in the crust cerebri, passing through the crust cerebri. And this will produce sign and symptoms known as the Weber syndrome. Okay. This will, this will lead to the same side drooping of the upper eyelid due to the paralysis of levator palpebral superioris, same side lateral squint due to the unopposed action of the lateral squint and uh, pupils becomes fixed and dilated due to the involvement of the edinger westphal nucleus and also the, there is a because of all the extra ocular muscles supplying by the third nerve gets paralyzed it will lead to the apparent protrusion of eyeball. Apparent protrusion of eyeball. Because all muscles will get loose and lax. They will not maintain their uh, integrity. So there is a apparent protrusion of eyeball will occur due to the paralysis of all extraocular muscles and second feature which will also occur due to the involvement of these corticospinal tract contralateral hemiplegia will occur so this is about weber syndrome second syndrome which is produced due to the involvement of this the uh, midbrain is the benedict syndrome b e n benedict syndrome in this syndrome, it occurred due to the vascular lesion involving the tegmentum of the midbrain. This area will get involved in the Benedict syndrome due to the vascular ischemia. So, as you see here, this will involve the third nerve. This will involve, this is the red nucleus. This will involve, this is the medial lemniscus and depending upon the severity it may involve the spinal lemniscus also so due to the involvement of these structures what will happen in this syndrome this will lead to the sign and symptoms due to the third nerve paralysis all the features concerned with that same in that aspect also same side same side lateral squint apparent 
protrusion of eyeball drooping of upper eye lid this condition is known as ptosis drooping of upper eyelid is known as eosinophilic okay so there is involvement of the third nerve same side number 2 involvement due to the involvement of the medial lemniscus it will lead to contralateral loss of fine touch pressure sensation vibration okay because this medial lemniscus is ascending tract it will carry the fine touch pressure and vibration sensations if there is a involvement of spinal lemniscus it will lead to the loss of contralateral loss of pain and temperature of the opposite side there is a involvement of red nucleus also which will lead to the contralateral involvement of contralateral tremors and in voluntary movements occur due to the involuntary movement of limb muscles due to the involvement of red nucleus okay so this will occur in the benedict syndrome benedict syndromes occur due to the vascular ischemia of the tegmentum which will involve the third nerve red nucleus medial lemniscus spinal lemniscus and superior cerebellar peduncle also if injury occur lesion occur severe so these will occur in the benedict syndrome one more syndrome sometimes occur is the paranoid syndrome what is that P A R I N A U D apostrophe S syndrome. This occurs sometimes because of the pressure here. Pressure occur over the superior colliculus. That means tectum area. due to pineal gland tumor due to the pineal gland tumor because pineal gland lies just over that if the tumor occur it will press this tectum of the midbrain superior colliculus level and because of that there is a this will lead to the upward gaze movement loss loss of upward gaze movement occur okay this will occur but the anatomical aspect why this loss of upward gaze movement occur is unknown this is whole about the midbrain